Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Adam, so much. Congresswoman Lee, for your stellar leadership, stupendous as always. And uh, thank you for always disturbing our peace. Thank you for disturbing our peace. Mayor, thank you so very much. Commissioner Ellis, all of the pastors. I want all of the faith leaders to stand wherever you are. All the pastors, faith leaders stand because, come on, give them a hand. We recognize the elected officials, all of them are amazing, and we're all amazing together. Let me quickly say this. When I said to the congressman, thank you for disturbing the peace, the way that you get things done is you have to disturb people's peace. Thank you, Rockets, for letting us come here today. We appreciate that. If we don't disturb the peace, we won't get justice. People say that Jesus was a peacemaker. Jesus was a disturber of the peace. He upset the status quo. You don't get crucified if you don't disturb the peace. I don't mean committing crime. I mean demanding justice. We're out here in the spirit of John Lewis making good trouble. And it's making sure that other people hear our voices to know that they can't sleep while Brittany can't sleep. They can't rest while Brittany can't rest. We cannot relax until Brittany can relax. Tonight when we finish, all of us are going to our humble abodes. We've got beds to sleep in that are comfortable. We've got central air and heat to make us comfortable. We've got quilts and we've got pillows to make ourselves comfortable. But Brittany, our sister, is not comfortable. I'm going to ask you to do something tonight. Do something to make yourself uncomfortable at home. Do something to remind you that I can't be comfortable at my house while Brittany is uncomfortable in a jailhouse. See how quiet y'all are now? See, see, it's, it's all right to sit in the seat and, and wave a little bit, but I need something to remind me that Brittany is not comfortable in a jailhouse while I'm comfortable at my house. This rally is so important. It's starting a movement. It's a spark. Brittany is not just an American athlete. Brittany is an American citizen. And Every voice in America needs to be called on to lift every voice and say, bring Brittany home. Black voices, bring Brittany home. White voices, bring Brittany home. Republican voices, bring Brittany home. Democratic voices, bring Brittany home. Because she's not just a great athlete, she is a great American. I'm glad that the Congresswoman has a resolution we want to see that, uh, President Biden, we want to see the Congress and the Senate, but it starts with the people. And I close with this, let's take the social media, and let's make sure there's a movement across this nation that spreads across the waters that says that is locked up in a Russian jail, a young American woman who doesn't deserve to be there. And until we make people uncomfortable, Hearing that message, we're not going to get this done. Thank you for being it. Listen, don't ever despise small beginnings. I read a book about a man named Gideon. And the Bible says he only had 300 soldiers. But those 300 soldiers, Coach Lucas, were willing to die for a cause. And when you get 300 people walking in unity and speaking one voice, one message, for one reason, God has a way of putting thunder in your feet. I wish I had about five people in here who will stand up on your feet and say, I'm a part of the army. Now, y'all have to come on. I'm a part of the army to bring Brittany home. I'll march to bring her home. I'll pray to bring her home. I'll sing to bring her home. I'll preach to give her home. I'll give to bring her home. I'm a part of the army. Come on, put the marching in your feet. Because we got to do this until Brittany comes home. I don't feel no way tired. We've come too far from where we started from. Nobody told us the road would be easy, but I don't believe God brought us this far to leave us. Shout it, bring Brittany home. Bring Brittany home. Bring Brittany.